All right, so canvases. Uh, I'm just going to explain a little bit about what they are. Um, a lot of people, even I, I mean, even experienced painters that don't really fully understand what this kind of is, what it's made out of, and how it works. So I'm just going to try and explain it as easily as I can. Um, there's two options for people who are starting to paint uh, in terms of canvases. Um, you can buy them like this, which is the simplest way, which is this was bought from a shop pre-made. Um, it's also the actual canvas itself. You can see it's a different colour on the back here. Uh, this side has been coated in white gesso, so it's primed. So this is called a pre-stretched primed canvas. Um, you'll notice in my own paintings that I use canvases that are more this kind of colour. So I actually stretch my own canvases. I don't buy pre-made canvases like this anymore. I buy what are called the stretcher bars, which is these wooden pieces here, which I'll explain why they're called that in a second. I buy those separately, and then I buy canvas on a roll. It's just blank canvas. It hasn't been primed. It hasn't got anything on it. Um, I then stretch this onto the stretcher bars, and then I prime it with a clear primer, which is a little bit like PVA glue, but a bit more expensive, uh, and then it's ready to be able to be painted on. Um, so it's the same process going from a canvas this size all the way to a canvas that size on the wall there. They're all the same, um, and I'll show you how they work. So. Um, these are some stretcher bars without canvas stretched on them. Um, and I'll just, you can see they pull apart. They've got these corners here, which slot together a little bit like a jigsaw. Sometimes I have to hammer them in, so they're tight. Um, they're called stretcher bars because once the canvas has been uh, put around this, and that is done usually with staples. So this would be the paint, the side that you would paint on, wraps around the back of the canvas. Let's do it this way. Sort of like, would be wrapped around the back like that. And you can do a fancy little corner like this. It would be stapled on here with a staple gun. Like that. Um, the job of these stretcher bars is to actually, once it's been stretched, once the canvas has been put on it, they're free to move on those corners and they can actually expand. So if I demonstrate, this is a canvas that's been stretched. There's no staples crossing the, the, uh, boundaries here where the two stretcher bars meet um, and you have these little holes at the sides here for f a few years I didn't understand what they were for and I would always get these strange things with pre-made canvases <laughs> these little wedges and I was like oh whatever and they just ended up on my studio floor floor or I'd throw them away these get put into these slots like this here and then you take a hammer Obviously, I would do this on the floor usually. You tap this here, and if I can show you in here, you can see that the stretcher bars are actually moving apart from each other. What that is actively doing, if you did it on all four corners, is it tightens the canvas on the front. The canvas on the front should be like a drum. This one could be tighter, so I would put these little keys in each corner and uh, get it a little bit tighter. And that means that um, you can work on it a bit more evenly. If it's not tightened like this and stretched properly, you risk hitting the stretcher bar through the canvas and it will create a line on your painting, which happens here and here. I see that happening on a lot of people's paintings uh, because they've not stretched it tight enough, essentially. So you need to go to the second process once you've stapled it all on, of stretching the corners to tighten the front of the canvas. Um, okay. Um, 
In terms of the stuff that I... So the choice of me using the clear primer, I do that just because I like the colour of... the warmer colour of the cotton that I paint on. Um, there's other artists that do that, like Rose Wiley, for instance. Um, but many artists leave it kind of this kind of uh, natural colour. I find it's a little bit warmer. I find the pre-primed canvases at the beginning, I found them too white, really bright. Uh, and eventually, actually, what I started doing was painting a colour all over them as a ground, usually pink. Uh, and that would make it easier for me to uh, tonally put my painting on top of it. Um, the, the bright white was just not very nice for me personally some people really work well with it and like like that kind of very uh clean white base but it depends on the work that you're making um these canvases over here are obviously much larger um i buy them like this this is what the bars come like i get, I get them off a website called canvas and stretcher bars .uk, or sometimes these ones are from jackson's art supplies which are really good quality they're quite thick you can get different thicknesses. The thinner they are, the more flexible they are. And if you paint in a big painting, you want them to be thicker, otherwise the painting will sort of bend and twist as it gets damp or as it gets dry. If you're making small paintings, like, like this size, actually the, th the thin bars are completely fine. This is really rigid. I've painted on these for many years and they never they never bow or anything, but it's because they're quite small. Um, so the thickness of the stretcher bar is purely uh, to stop it from twisting. You can, when you're buying pre-made canvases, also get different thicknesses. If you can afford it, if you go for the thicker ones, they're gonna be um, safer for longer, especially if you're painting anything kind of about this big those the thin stretcher bars can start to twist as the painting dries or if if your studio or wherever you're keeping your paintings is slightly damp they can twist and i've had a canvas actually even once snap because it had twisted so bad and it was they were quite thin stretchers so i don't really use those anymore some of them will have these crossbars like this the bigger canvases they just slot in and you can put keys in the corners like on the corners here just to keep them tight um, but they're really just to keep the whole thing rigid and at right angles. Um, yeah. I can't think of anything else particularly that you need to know. Um, it, it's really up to you as to whether you build them yourself or you buy them like pre-made like this. If you're just starting out, this is definitely the easiest way to go and it's what I did at the beginning. You can actually also get really good quality ones which have got thick stretcher bars. If you go to a good good art shop uh, in London, there's Atlantis, there's Jackson's, there's Russell and Chapel. Um, they all do stretcher bars, pre-stretch canvases and the separate parts. Cowling and Wilcox also sell um, canvas on the roll um, and also stretcher bars as well. So there's lots of options in London. Um, outside of London, there's places like, I think Fred Alders is a company, and then there's lots of independent art shops that can probably order the parts for you. Or you can go online and find them yourself. Yeah. Hopefully that was some use and explains a little bit of the mystery about these, especially that they should stretch. That's why they're called stretcher bars. Okay.